Let's do something fun, like create a custom page. Like always, any custom code will live in a module. And modules live in the uh, modules directory. Create a new one called dino underscore roar. To make Drupal fall in love with your module, create the info file. Dino roar.info.yml. If you loved the old info files, then you'll feel all warm and fuzzy with these. It's the same exact thing, but now in the YAML format. Inside, give it a name, Dino Roar, a type, module, description, Roar at you, package, sample, and core, 8.x. If YAML is new to you, cool! It's pretty underwhelming. Just a colon separated key value pair. But make sure you have at least one space after the colon. YAML also supports hierarchies of data via indentation, but there's none of that in this file. Module ready. Head back to the browser and go into the extend section. With any luck, we'll see the module here. There it is, under sample, Dino Roar. Sounds terrifying. Check the box and press the install button anyways. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing, but now we can build that page I keep talking about. In any modern framework, and I am including Drupal in this category, creating a page is two steps. First, define the URL for the page via a route. That's your first buzzword, in case you're writing things down. Second, create a controller for that page. This is a function that you'll write that actually builds the page. It's also another buzzword, controller. If these are new buzzwords for you, that's okay. They're just a new spin on some old ideas. For step one, create a new file in the module dino underscore roar dot routing dot yml. Create a new route called dino says. This is the internal name of the route, and it isn't important yet. Go in four spaces, or two spaces, it doesn't matter, just be consistent. And add a new property to this route called path. Set it to slash the slash dino slash says, the URL to the new page. Oh. By the way, the standard is two spaces in YAML files, not four. I'm using four because that's what we use in the Symfony world. Either way, it'll work. Below path, a few more properties are needed. The first is defaults, with an underscore controller key beneath it. The underscore controller key tells Drupal which function should be called when someone goes to the URL for this exciting page. Set this to Drupal slash dino underscore roar slash controller slash roar controller colon colon roar. This is a namespaced class followed by colon colon and then a method name. We'll create this function in a second. Also add a requirements key with a underscore permission key set to access content. We won't talk about permissions now, but this is what will allow us to view the page. In YAML, you usually don't need quotes, except in some edge cases with special characters. But it's always safe to surround values with quotes. So if you're in doubt, use quotes. I don't need them around access content, but it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. Step one complete, we have a route. For step two, we need to create the controller, the function that will actually build the page. Inside of the dino roar module, create an src directory, and then a controller directory inside of that. Finally, add a new PHP class called Roar Controller. Okay, stop. Fun fact, every class you create will have a namespace at the top. If you're not comfortable with namespaces, they're really easy. So easy that we teach them to you in 120 seconds in our namespaces tutorial. So pause this video, check that out, and then everything we're about to do will seem much more awesome. But you can't just set the namespace to any old thing. There are rules, people. It must start with Drupal slash, then the name of the module, dino underscore roar slash, then whatever directory or directories this file lives in after src. This class lives in controller. Your class name also has to match the file name plus.php.
If you mess any of this up, Drupal isn't going to be able to find your class. The full class name is now Drupal slash Dino Roar slash Controller slash Roar Controller. Hey, this conveniently matches the underscore controller of our route. In Roar Controller, add the new public function Roar. Now you might be asking yourself what a controller function like this should return. And to that, I say, excellent question. Brilliant. A controller should always return a symphony response object. Okay, that's not 100% true, but let me lie for just a little bit longer. To return a response, say, return new response. I'll let it autocomplete the response class from Symphony's HTTP foundation namespace. When I hit tab to select this, PHPStorm adds the use statement to the top of the class automatically, and that's important. Whenever you reference a class, you must add a use statement for it. If you forget, you'll get the famous class not found error. For the page content, we will, of course, roar. That's it, that's everything. Go to your browser and head to slash the slash dino slash says. Hmm, page not found. As a seasoned Drupal developer, you may be wondering, uh, do I need to clear some cache? My gosh, you're right.